we are looking at three, two, day two. And just a quick review of our arc length formula. Arc length, radius, and angle measure. And remember, our just our common sense was we're going to take the fraction of the circle by taking the angle measure and dividing by a full circle's angle measure, which is either 360 degrees or 2 pi, depending on what the top one is. And then we're going to multiply by circumference 2 pi r. Oops. So our first example today, uh, we've got this pulley. Uh, we don't know the radius, and this pulley has some rope suspended in the air, and we got this box down here. So if a rotation of 75 degrees <coughs> raises the box 14.3 inches. Oh, alrighty, sounds good. You got test in here. When do you want to take this one? This hour or do you have another hour you want to take it? Okay, right now then? Okay, uh, if 75 raises that, what's the radius? Alright, you think about that while I get her set up with her cast across the hall. See if you can come up with a plan. It is. Because you think about it. If you crank this thing up, this dot is going to travel around the arc of the circle <coughs> and make a 75 degree angle with its original position. And it says it's going to raise that up 14.3 inches. So that means 14.3 inches is going to wrap around that pulley. So yes, that is the arc length in disguise. So they disguised it as the height up, but you didn't realize that it's going to wrap around the pulley. Everybody got a vision for that? Now it's just an easy problem like yesterday, where we know the arc length is 14.3. The angle measure is 75 degrees, so that'll help us get a, the fraction of a circle. So 75 out of what's going on the bottom, 360, they got a match. And then times the 2 pi r. Okay, now it's working backwards. I want you to try this. There's going to be a, a something in here that you're probably going to make a mistake on. But I want you to make the mistake so hopefully it sticks in your brain. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I did wrong. But work that backwards, see how you do. Then I'm going to show all the baby steps if you don't get it. what'd you get? 10.9 is correct. 10.9? Anybody not 10.9? There's got to be a few. 
you didn't get 10.9. You're not the only one. Okay, here's what I would do. So those of you that got it, you don't need to pay attention to my algebra. I'm going to give one technique that'll work. Anytime I've got this fraction in the bottom, I like to get rid of that first. So I'm going to, so this is divide by 360. I'm going to multiply both sides by 360 to cancel that out. So then 360 times the 14.3, 5,148 equals, and then here I've got 75 times 2 times pi times r. I'm going to multiply the 75 times 2 and get 150 pi. If you want to multiply the 150 by pi, you can, but all I need to do now is divide by the 150 pi. So, it looks pretty simple, right? Clear that out. 5148 divided by 150 pi. That looks like what I want. How is the calculator interpreting what I just typed in? Isabel? It is. It's doing order of operations. We see 150 pi as one number in our brain. Calculator doesn't see it that way. It says, oh, you don't have to put a time sign between there, but there is one, so it'll divide first and then times. So that's an awful big radius. So technically, when you have a pi number, you're going to want to put it in parentheses like this. I don't know if anybody would make that mistake or not. Maybe, did you guys multiply by pi in and get a decimal? But there's the 10.9. So if you're going to divide by a number pi, it has to be in parentheses. So the radius is about 10.9 inches. What kind of calculator do you have? Oh, does it make a fraction bar, though? Well, I don't know how you did it. Because some calculators will do the... It, may, it actually looks like this, so it knows, you know, like a numerator and denominator, where this is not. It does it? Well, what if I didn't want that? What if I wanted 5,148 divided by 150 and then times that by pi? Then what would you do? Casio, subpar calculator. <laughs> All right, moving on. Number two. This time we've got two gears, you know, with the T's that fit together as one turns, the other one turns. Okay, two gears. Small gear and a big gear. So they got little T's that fit together. Oh gosh, that's a terrible picture, but anyway. Here's what we know. So they have a point of contact. And so as one turns, the other one turns. So let's say if this one turns 50 degrees, 50 degrees, not 5, this one is not going to turn 50 degrees. Let me a little bit. This one actually turns. Oh, I did it wrong. This one's 80 degrees. 50 degrees. My bad. 80 and... I could have just shortened up the other one. That'll, that'll work. 80 and 50. This one has a radius of 11.7. This is the radius we're looking for. Okay. The trick to doing these two pro this problem is to realize that the distances traveled along here are equal. These arc lengths are going to be the same. The angle measures are not, but those distances traveled have to be the same because they're in contact with each other for the same amount of material. This one just has to turn more than this one. So the trick is arc lengths are equal. So what we can do, it's going to be a two-stepper. We have enough information to find the arc length over here on the small one. Then we can transfer that number over here, 
and then solve for the radius. See, this one has two unknowns, the arc length and the r. This one only has the one unknown, the arc length. So we can find the arc length. Find the arc length here, which is the 80 over 360 multiplied by the 2 pi r. And that's just calculate button pushing. Let me know what you get. Anybody? <coughs> Waiting. 16.3. So if this one has a distance of 16.3, we can use that same number over here. So we can set up the arc length over here has to be 16.3. The angle was 50 <coughs> over 360 times by 2 pi r. So just like our first example, do the algebra, work backwards, see if you get it right this time. See if my teaching did any good on the first one. If you didn't get number one right, try it number two. I got 18.7. Uh, Anybody not able to come up with that? Okay. Well, that ends the arc length portion of this section. <coughs> Good. We have another theorem discovery. Our theorem discovery is area of a sector. So let's say we have a circle that has an area of a hundred square inches inside of there. going to discover this very quickly with two quick examples. If I had a sector that had a 90 degree angle, what would its area be? Isaac? One fourth of this area, correct? because we know 90 is one-fourth of the circle, so it would be one-fourth of the hundred, because 90 out of 360 is one-fourth. All right, one more. I knew it wasn't going to take long. What if it was a 20-degree sector? What fraction is 20 degrees? 20 over 360. 1 18th of it. So 1 18th of 100 is something I don't know in my head. Five point five repeating. Okay, so 
I think you can see where the um, concept is very much like the arc length. To get the area of a sector, we're going to take the fraction of the circle. and multiply it by the area of the full circle. <coughs> so, they do use A for area of the sector. We get the fraction of the circle the same way we did earlier. It's your central angle measure divided by either 360 or 2 pi, depending on what kind of angle they give you. But this time, instead of multiplying by circumference, we're going to multiply by the area of a full circle. How do you get the area of a circle? Pi r squared. I guess I should have had a little picture here. So we'll be talking radius, angle measure, and then the area inside of there. Okay, we'll try a couple of these. <coughs> Actually, I think I just did one of these because the algebra is just the same kind of algebra. Just got to make sure you got the right formula here. Asking you for the angle, radius is 4.1, the area inside of that sector is 25.8 square inches. And I want the angle in radians. essentially just plug and chug. Knowing that we're working with area, just make sure you change the second <coughs> part to the area of a circle formula. So, we've got the area, 25.8, that's going in for that, 25.8. We don't know the angle, but I do know I want it in radians, so your denominator is going to be 2 pi. And then we're multiplying by the area of this full circle, which is pi times the 4.1 squared. I would cancel the pies off to make your life a little better. And now it's just times by 2, divide by 4.1 squared. Two steps. <coughs> times by 2. Uh, 51.6 equals... I'm just going to leave it as 4.1 squared times theta, but you feel free to multiply it out if you want. And then I just got to divide by 4.1 squared. I don't think I need parentheses here because it will do the squaring before the dividing. I got 3.07 radians. Oh. Yep. <coughs> so its angle is actually almost 180 degrees. That's okay. I don't think we need a bunch of these, do you? I don't think so either. But I do have one more uh, story problem. The phrase subtends an angle. It's back to arc length. So, the phrase subtends an angle just means for 
very small angle measures. you in a picture. If I have a very small angle measure, I'm going to exaggerate my very small angle measure. What we're going to say is that this curved arc length here is going to be a close approximation to the vertical distance if I was to just connect vertically this point to this point. So if that was straight up and down, the curve does come around it on the outside a little bit, but the smaller I make that angle, the smaller the difference is. So if we're approximating a linear distance, we can use this curve distance as a good approximation. So for very small angles of theta, I'll call x the vertical distance, the s value is about equal to the x value. So I have one story problem to show you how that's going to work. What are we on for a number? Four? Okay. The Empire State Building. Subtends an angle. of 1.3 degrees when I am 2.3 miles away from it. Estimate the height of the building. Okay, so you've got your Empire State Building. I'm going to totally exaggerate this. Here you are, 2.3 miles away from it. And you take out your little angle measuring tool and you measure to the top and to the bottom. And that angle, that subtensive angle, means you're going to measure from the top to the bottom. And this technically is only supposed to be 1.3 degrees. That wasn't for this hour, was it? No. Okay. No. This is the other 60 attendance. Okay. So, because the angle's so small and they're asking me to estimate it, oh, and I'm uh, 2.3 <coughs> miles away, we are going to let the height of the building be estimated by the arc length of the circle coming through here. Where I'm standing at the center of the circle with that 2.3 mile radius. You have a vision for that? So we're going to use S to estimate this vertical distance. So it's still just an arc length problem. A very easy arc length problem. It's just understanding what all that terminology meant. And so now it's a simple setup. S equals 1.3 out of a possible 360 full circle, so a very small fraction of the circle, times by back to circumference because I'm doing arc length. 2 pi 
what are the units on this answer? I'm getting point zero five two zero five two if I go two sig figs. That would be in miles. We don't usually measure the height in miles. If I wanted it in feet, does anybody know the conversion? Yeah, times 5,280, so about 275 feet is what we're coming up with, but it doesn't matter. There's a second. All right, that's all you got. So you've got area today and some arc length today. Just remember to switch that second um, formula, circumference versus area.